all of your destiny, all of your future, all of the things that's supposed to happen to you daily is in the seed that you sow. God is not mocked whatsoever a man sow, he shall also reap. That means that God is watching everybody sowing. He can't be mocked, meaning he can't be tricked. He know what you sow. So that's how your life going to go in the direction of what you sow. So there are different kinds of sowing. There is fleshly sowing. That means that you give in to your lust, your cravings. That's fleshly sowing. Now, what happens in fleshly sowing? You accumulate demons. You learn all the options of evil. In fleshly sowing, you find out how far you can rebel. Oftentimes as teenagers, when they get to the realm of fleshly sowing, they start operating in more evils because they have more knowledge. You notice that you don't have to rebuke an infant or a toddler for hookah, you see, the knowledge is not there, all right? So when you deal with fleshly sowing, so, fleshly sowing is where you accumulate demons. Now, when we deal with Holy Spirit sowing, this is where you increase the grace of God on your life. In Holy Spirit sowing, more angels come into your life, more than what you had during your birth. Everybody, when you're born, you have at least two angels, at least. Some people have more, by the way, because of the calling. So John the Baptist wasn't born with two angels. He was born with many angels. He was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. The same with Jesus. Same with Jeremiah. That's so what I said before I picture in your mother's well, I called you to be a prophet. They were, were, were filled with an influx of angelic company. But in life, when you step into Holy Spirit sowing, angels multiply around you, which means that you have more of an atmosphere for heaven's conditions, for miracles, signs, wonders, and things to happen in your physical environment that won't happen for other people. Now, also, angels are teachers. So they teach you alongside of the Holy Spirit, which is the Lord. The Lord, he, he has given angels jobs. The same way is the same way if I was to send somebody to you to talk to you for me. I'm not sending them to talk to you for me because I can't talk. I'm sending them to talk to you for me because that is their job that pleases me. So the same way angels, when they are operating with the Holy Spirit, there's no competition. Their boss is the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost may not want to say it to you directly. He may want to use the angels to, to, to do their job towards you. So the Holy Spirit can come to Mary and speak to her mind. But it's Gabriel's job to release the message. Holy Spirit sowing. Angels talk to you in Holy Spirit sowing. You'll hear the voice of angels speaking words to your brain on how to respond to a situation. Sometimes the angel will say, don't go to that store. It's the angel talking. Angels talk to you when you're a virtuous woman. The same thing demons talk to a vicious woman. That's why she gets the rock and she aims it perfectly, throws it out the window. Kaboom. By the way, the other day I was, <laughs> I was, I was somewhere and a man was driving with the vehicle and his whole back window was out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, baby D done threw a rock inside that just broke the whole window out.
My God. Every time, every time. That's how Baby D just do that. Do that rock. Do that rock. Just do it all of a sudden. The whole back window was out. And you know he be driving, and they driving fast trying to get to their destination because it's cold outside. That'd be the thing about it, you know. People that don't have the Holy Ghost have demonic angels talking to them on how to deal with situations. Did you know that? So, in, in fleshly sowing, there's demons accumulating in one's life. They're becoming more possessed by demons, which means that the brain is invested in the philosophy that's wrong. When the idea comes that's wrong, the brain says, I'll, I'll experiment. I'll try that out. I'll see how that works. Fleshly sowing introduces you more and more on how to rob God with your life. When people are in fleshly sowing, they are becoming masters of witchcraft. Now, I want you to think about this. The children of Israel were so used to fleshly sowing that when Moses came, they're angry that he is operating in Holy Spirit sowing. They're mad at him. They're saying, you brought us out here to die, which in, in a sense is correct. Because they were supposed to die to fleshly sowing. So let, let me show you this. When the, when the Lord is introducing you to Holy Spirit sowing, the demons that were accumulated in fleshly sowing will tell you that is a death sentence. Wow. 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 Are you catching that? Because they know that they took their place through your fleshly sowing. You created a, a hut, a habitat, a tabernacle for unclean spirits in through fleshly sowing. So when, when you're introduced to Holy Spirit sowing, they don't like that. So the demons that were accumulated in one's life through fleshly sowing won't even let them enjoy or embrace Holy Spirit sowing. So there's some people, they don't sow for six weeks. There's some people don't sow until eight weeks. There's some people that don't sow until 20 weeks. There's some people that don't sow at all. I'm, talk I'm talking about in life in general. There's some people that believe that giving God 10% is the best that they could give. Even that's robbery. Because 10% was a base level. It was to train the people to get back into Holy Spirit sowing, to restore Holy Spirit sowing, because fleshly sowing had taken such a root in their life. So God was giving them uh, amateur steps into sowing. Just think about this. There are people that don't even think about sowing because the demons that have accumulated in fleshly sowing has a veil over their mind. So they don't think about sowing. Holy Spirit sowing is a far off thing that they don't have no intention to do. Now saints, these are, these are the people that they'll act like God is withholding things from them. But Psalm 84 says that no good thing will God withhold from those that walk uprightly. So people are not walking uprightly. That's why things are being withheld because they're not walking uprightly. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. You can't walk uprightly without a seed. Because God, he provides for you every month. He provides for you every week. He's always helping you out. You can't walk uprightly without a seed. 
So Holy Spirit sowing is where one's life begin to progress. That's where you start to advance in the spirit world. That's where grace start to increase in you and around you and upon you. Now there is grace in seed sowing, Holy Spirit sowing, where that grace means God's ability to live in you, to live through you starts to come out more apparently. Your words start to be overtaken by him. Your vocabulary, your mindset, your desires, all of these start to be overtaken by the will of the spirit of God. That's why I'm telling you, there's some people, they haven't even sown enough into the Lord to receive his desires for their life. So their desires are still demonic. You have sold, but you haven't sold enough. You haven't even made a proper investment dimension into God to receive his desire. So there's some desires that you have that are evil. Oh Lord, I'm sowing this seed. I want, I want Mr. Peanut Head to come out of jail even though he in jail for murder and he's a murderer, he's shaking people inside jail right now, but I want him to come out. So I'm naming my seed, Mr. Peanut, get justice. What the easy for she's and Mr. Peanut gonna get justice for? It's not him that need the justice, it's the people that he killing. But see, you got Mr. Peanut coming out of jail because this is an evil desire. If you keep on sowing, the Holy Ghost is going to overtake your soul and purge you of all the evil that you got in it that's wrong. Because that's why you're naming your seed wrong. Because you got evil inside of you. And God has created a sowing path to bathe the soul for everybody. Everybody has a sowing path. They have a sowing road of righteousness for their life to bubble bath their soul, to bleach their soul, to take away the stains of error because there's desires in everybody that's wrong. Let, let, let me show you something that's real powerful. Patience is permission for purging. So whenever God wants to purge somebody, if you're not a patient person, it can't happen. Anxiety makes you speed up without acknowledging God. Anxiety pits you as a servant of your body. If you're taking notes, remember this. Anxiety makes you a servant of your flesh. In patience, the spirit of God could check you and give correction and give accuracy and give the impartation of purity. But the Holy Spirit can't do it in anxiety. So even when you sow seed, if you sow seed anxiously, it's fleshly sowing infecting Holy Spirit sowing. Money cometh is not an anxiety factor because you don't have to rush God to multiply a seed that you sowed. He been multiplying seeds sown before you had even came to the earth. He been doing it with numerous amounts of people and no sower could ever say, I didn't receive the result of my seed. No sower could ever say that. No sower could ever say that I, I didn't get what the Lord promised me from sowing. Now, this, this was something amazing. I want to show you this. Let's go to Mark chapter 10 and, and let me show you something because I was reading this the other night. And the Holy Spirit received, 
uh, showed, showed me this. Watch what happened. In verse 28, then Peter said unto Jesus, we have left all and we have followed thee. Look at what the Lord responded. Now this should excite you and you should memorize this for the rest of your days on earth. And Jesus answered and said, verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, that has left brethren, brothers, sisters, father, mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this life. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. And in the world to come, eternal life. I'm going to show you. The Lord is telling Peter, your sowing has your eternity in it. You're going to spend all eternity in heaven because you decided to Holy Spirit so. So now you know why I be saying your, your, your sowing changes your eternity because I'm showing you the Lord who is the judge over all is given a secret in this text, a prophetic apostolic mystery. He's saying you have eternal life in your sowing. They said, we have given away all. We have left all to follow you. And the Lord is saying, eternal life is in this. But then I want to highlight this. He said that there is no man that has left and sold and didn't receive a hundredfold in this life. So I'm showing you this, this a pinpoint, this a pinnacle, pinpoint, this a PowerPoint. The Lord is revealing here that there's nobody that could sow their way out and not receive riches and wealth in this life. Houses and lands in this life. Abundance in this life. Increase in this life. He's saying in this life, I have all those things, not for the next life. I'm not going to have you wait into eternity to get all these things. He said, there's no man that could say that they sold their way out and money come if didn't happen. There's no man that could say, I sold my way out and I didn't become a multimillionaire. There's no man that could say that. There's no man that could say, I sold my way out and God didn't bless me with nice clothes, nice shoes. God didn't lavish his love on me. I didn't see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I didn't have blessings overtaking me. I didn't have my storehouse running over with prosperity and increase. He said, there's no man that could say that. So I want you to look at the persona of King Jesus. When he's teaching you of the kingdom of sowing, and reaping, the reaping going to be explosive. That's how he confirmed to you the effectiveness of the sowing. 